the shop was desktop. This is a smaller version of what we have over there, the router. Uh, we use this mostly for uh, wood and plastic uh, compared to metal that we use lace and mills, mills for uh, because the spindle speed in this one and the one over there is about 12,000 uh, RPM uh, which is required, which is pretty high speed for wood, finish, finish cutting the wood and making a uh, smooth surface. You could do the same thing with the mills but it's not going to be as nice because the maximum speed, uh, spindle speed for the mill is going to be like 5,000. Um, so we use this machine for the woodworking. Uh, for our coaster project, we have already have a pile of different size uh, uh, wood stock. For our coasters, we're going to use a 3.5 by 3.5 inch uh, squares. And as you can see, the grain of the wood should be the same when we put them to the to, put, should be horizontal when we put them inside our jig. Uh, we have created this jig so it can hold three coasters at a time. In order to fix the uh, fix the coasters in place, we are going to use this fixture. To make the design for the coasters, we're going to use a program called Aspire. You can open it, create a new file, and the first page uh, would ask you to put the dimension of your uh, desktop, the desktop shop box. We have already made handouts. And these handouts include every step for making the coaster, including the first page, as you can see here. You can just put the dimensions as you see it on the in the handout, and to make the to make the coaster. You can see that we're gonna put a 24 and 18 here. This refers to the size of our uh, shop box table. In our program, we're gonna put the 24 by 18 inch as the dimension of the, our whole board, and then we're gonna go and um, design each of each one of these squares and what we want to be carved inside each one of them. Uh, this point is the 0, 0.00 point for the x and y dimension uh, on our shop box, and we will gonna have an offset uh, from this zero point. To our first uh, first coaster, which uh, is included in the handout, can refer to. So this is our 24 by 18 inch. That's gonna represent our shop box. As as you can see here, this is the zero zero point zero on top and zero. Yeah, this is our zero point. Now we would like to design our uh, three coasters. For that reason, we're gonna click on the square this in the drawing section up here. We're gonna click on the square and we're gonna give it some dimension uh, to where to position it. The anchor point would be on top, and we're gonna have 6.3557. Seven point six six one four as the position offset for our first coaster. The, the size of the coaster would be three point five uh, on the, in the x direction and three point four five in the uh, y direction. This uh, dimension slightly changes. Uh, on the y direction, if you're depending if, uh, on uh, the fact if you're using walnut or cherry for your coasters, for cherry it is 3.45 in the y direction. For walnut, it's gonna be 3.49 for the y direction. You can press create, and we're gonna have our first coaster. Now, in order to 
yeah, okay. make three clusters, we can use a linear pattern. We can click on the R square that we already have. Down here, we can click on the create a linear area of copies. And we can tell it to uh, create same dimension, one row and three of them. Load with the selecting gap and putting zero as a gap between. So we copy it, and there we have our three clusters represented. Now we're gonna design uh, only the first coaster using the same uh, explanation that you see in this video. You can design the rest of the coasters yourself. First of all, because we don't want our tool to carve anything outside of this boundary because it will touch the, our actual fixture, we're going to make an uh, offset boundary in, uh, a little bit inside the coaster. You can go here, you can select our coaster, uh, select, uh, select our coaster, go to the offset, select offset, and inward, we want to put 0.3 inches offset. As you can see, it has created an uh, inner boundary for our coaster. Now, selecting the circle and coming to the middle of the our coaster, we can see that our uh, arrow changes to a bullseye. We can drag it out. Uh, drag it out. The, the, the position of the center of, this, of our circle is already selected by the bullseye and we can change the radius to what we want. For example here we would like to use a 1.2 inches as our radius and click apply. Now we have our circle now I want to show you how to use a circular pattern to create different objects, for example in our case a circle that follows this big circular pattern that we have in the middle. For this reason we're going to use a circle. We're going to go on the top of our uh, big circle in the middle. We can see that our arrow changes and we're going to make a smaller circle give you the radius of 0.2 press apply and close now by selecting the uh, small circle holding the shift key and selecting the big circle and coming to our drawing options down here copy objects along, along vectors we can tell it to follow our big uh, circular pattern by selecting copy objects and selecting number of copies to be 6. However, we can also select the distance between the copies. In our case, uh, this makes sure that uh, we're going to have, have a range of r smaller circles following each other in this pattern with 0.5 inches distance between them and by clicking the force even spacing they're gonna have even spacing between them as we can see here notice that we can zoom in and out of our uh, our design by the scroll key on our mouse now if we scroll in and select the big circle because we only needed it for the pattern if uh, it is when it is selected, we can press the delete key on our keyboard to delete it. Also, we can see that here, this is our first circle, and it, it has created two circles on top of each other. So we can click it, delete one of the versions, and then now we only have one copy of it. We can scroll it out again, and now we can put a text in the middle of our circular pattern here. For that, you go here and click on draw text. We can write our text here, maybe something like M shop. 
there are different vari variety of details. You can change the font, you can change it to bold, you can change it, align in different sizes and change the size of your text. When you press apply, it is going to be written on this corner down here. Sometimes you're going to be looking for it. It's going to be down here. You can close. Select your text. Using the arrow keys, you can move your text around. But if you want to make sure that it is in centered in the middle of our uh, our coaster, you can click on it. Shift click the uh, the inner border of our coaster. Go here to uh, transform objects, align selected object, and you can see we have a center here. By pressing that, this is going to be centered in the middle of our coaster. You can say close. So in order to change the size of the text, you can either double click on it, you can see this, uh, and holding the shift key, you can go at the corner and change the change size of the text to what you want. But in order to be more precise, you can press escape key. Select your text, and again select the text, draw text icon. Here you can change the text height to what you want. For example, 0 0.3, make it smaller, 0 0.4. And then you can press, press close, and again align it just like you did before in the center. can come here and before we save it, we go here and material setup and say set. Here this is the thickness of our material. Our coasters are 0 0.375 inches are 0 0.375 inches thick and that is the number that we put as the thickness of our material and we select the anchor to be on top, not at the bottom. Now that we are done with our design, we would like to create this coaster with our shop button machine. You can here click to switch to the toolpath tab. The drawing tab has been closed. You can always open it by pressing the drawing. You can see here. But now we are going to use the toolpath option for making our coaster. Notice that each one of these drawings that you have made until now are considered a vector. In order to select all of these circles together, you can uh, left click and drag until all of them are selected. By pressing shift and clicking on the M shop, you can deselect M shop. Now if you press G on your keyboard, it will group all the circles together. So now if you click on one of them, all of them will be selected together. In order to ungroup them, you can press U. So U and G for grouping and ungrouping. Now we would like to select the inner boundary, the group of our circles, and M shop for our V-card. Here under the toolpad, we can see the icon for V-card or engraving toolpad. For this, we would like these dimensions to be exactly as here. We want the, our tool back to start from zero on the surface and go on a flat depth of 0 0.12. You can click and select the flat depth from here. Next thing we would like to choose is our tool. We are going to be using the half inch 90 degree V bit, 5 inch diameter. Angle is 90 degree, depth of pass of 0.2, final pass step over of 0.01, uh, uh, clearance of 0.1, spindle speed 12,000 uh, RPM, feed rate 2, gun range uh, 5. Notice that sometimes this option changes from inches per second to inches per minute. Make sure that it is uh, the unit is inches per second. Then press OK. And you can give your project a name. I call it Path 1. And you can select Calculate.
Now, what we did was that we selected three different in, uh, enclosed vectors. So, what is how the the way this program works is that it carves. If you select only one one vector, it will carve on the top of that vector. If you select select more than one enclosed vector, it will engrave in the middle of those, as you can see here. In order to see how your final pr product will look like, you can press, you can select your toolpath, which we have only one here, and select preview all toolpaths or preview so preview selected toolpath. So we can close it now. And so in order to save this toolpath, we close this. We select our toolpath, and here we have a save toolpath option. You would like to make sure that output all visible toolpaths to the file is selected. We can check if this is the correct toolpath because sometimes you have only you don't have only one path, you have multiple toolpaths, toolpaths, and you want to make sure that all of them are selected and put it put in uh, one file. You select your machine. Our machine is a is a long list, and uh, the desktop shop bot is a um, arcsinch.spp. You like to select that, and you save your toolpath, save it to your to your desktop, uh, rather than save, saving it on a thumb drive, because it can communicate faster with the shop bot when reading the data. Notice that we can save our Aspire program or we can save our toolpath. For right now, we only save the toolpath, but if you would like to reuse your program, you can also save your Aspire program from file and save. Let's minimize this video. In order to communicate with the shop bot, we use the shop bot <coughs> icon here. Shopbot program. This is the main window, and this is the control panel for the Shopbot. Here, this yellow icon is the easy and quick control panel to move the spindle. These four icons, these four buttons, will control the Shopbot in the X and Y direction. These two will control the height or the Z direction of the shop. We know how to move the spindle. We move the spindle so we have a space to work with our hands in order to put the tool in. For this project, we're going to use a 90 degree V carving tool. We're going to put the collet in the collet holder, put the tool inside, and then load it into our machine. And use these wrenches to put the tool in place. Now we want to load our program, our toolpad that we saved, into the shopbot program. You can do it by pressing file. I recommend that you use the second option, part, <coughs> part file edit, to see your file before you run the program. You have saved it as task one. One thing that you can see is that our Aspire program made a toolpath toolpath file, which is basically a big file made of different coordinates for the shop bot to move the spindle. You can see that all of them, the one important thing to notice is that the Z dimension is the mid, the minimum for the Z dimension is our minus, is minus 0 0.12 which is set in, as a flat depth. We don't want it to go lower than that. So now that we look at it, everything looks good. You can close it and press cut part. Every time you turn on the machine, 
you want to zero your X and Y, which is this icon over here, and it does it automatically. to zero our z-axis. In order to do that, we use the plate here. We first move our uh, spindle to the top of our uh, coasters. That's where we wanted to see it using the control key, control panel. Close it and then the mechanism is that there's gonna be a current from here to this plate. So we will lock this on our on uh, tool holder. We can notice that if by pressing this to the tip of the tool drill bit, there's gonna be a green uh, icon over there showing that there's gonna, there is a current flowing through our plate and that's what we want to check before we run the Z, uh, Z0 we hold the plate underneath then we press Z ask us, say ok and then And then you can see the message that says the Z axis is down zero. Put the plate back in order to, to cut our coaster, press cut part, select our file. Notice that we can put offset for our work in two in two in two manners. We can do it inside the program, which that's what we did, or we can physically move the spindle, move the drill bit to the point that we want and then uh, select that as a 2D offset but for, for, for now since we have already put the offset in our program this will be no offset we, we're not going to change any of this and we just press start but before we press start I have to tell you that space button or this uh, key this uh, button over here are your friends if anything goes wrong by pressing the space bar or this button here, which will turn into stop after we press it. You can stop the machine at any time. You can also use this. You can also use this key here in case of in case of emergency. Just press it down, and we will shut down the whole system. Let's start. Press start. As to turn on the router and see, okay. And it will stop. Because it is a high speed spindle, we always use the shield for protection. 